The book of Titus is a short letter written to a group of young Christians. They were young Christians who had recently become Christians. They grew up in a culture that didn't acknowledge God, that certainly didn't believe in Jesus. And as a result, they're faced with a few threats. They're faced with the threats of that pagan culture, but they're also faced with the threat of false teachers within their church. And because of that, the Apostle Paul sends like an emergency letter, an emergency message to these Christians. And the message is, has got two parts. The first part of the message is understand the gospel, understand the good news of salvation. That's what gospel means. It means good news. Understand the message of salvation that you can be rescued from your sins. And the second part of the message is that because of this salvation, it should change your entire life. And so we're going to spend most of our lessons unpacking what it means that the gospel changes us. But in this lesson, we're going to focus on the gospel. We're going to look at Titus chapter 3, where the apostle Paul unpacks for us the message of the gospel. So let's look at the first point in that. Before we can be saved, we have to understand our problem. The Bible offers us a message of salvation, but you might be wondering, well, what am I being saved from? Well, in verse 3 of, of chapter 3, it tells us all sorts of sins that we do as humans, all sorts of things that we do that separate us from God and from other people. And I encourage you to take a look at the list of those sins. And those sins are pretty awful. But if you're honest with yourself, you'll recognize that, yeah, you do a lot of this stuff. And, and I've done a lot of this stuff, particularly before you become a Christian. And the Bible says that everybody without Jesus, everyone who's not a Christian, they're slaves to sin. Now, I'm not picking on you if you're not yet a Christian. I just want you to understand that every human without the help of Jesus, without the grace of Jesus in their life, they're in the exact same place. They're slaves to sin and they're separated from God. And so that's what we're being saved from. We're being saved from our sins. And that brings us to the second point. You can't find salvation through trying to earn it. Now, a lot of people understand that there's a problem, but they do something so foolish. They try and save themselves. They throw themselves upon uh, being religious people or moral people or doing a lot of good works of charity, thinking that this will save me. This will ease my guilty conscience. This will get me close to God, but that's not true. And the Bible makes it explicit that our good works or our righteousness will not get us eternal life, will not get us to heaven. Let's take a look. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness. I can't imagine the Bible making it any clearer that you do not earn your salvation. None of us do. It is, it's the gift of God, and that's our next point. Salvation is the work of God in you. From beginning to end, the message of the gospel is that it's God rescuing you. It's God saving you. It's His work. And so we see that in verses 4 through 7 talks about how God saves us through the regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. And you know, the message of salvation is, is very clearly what Paul has alluded to already at this point, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he lived a sinless life. I mean, he came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross and he was raised from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins and so that we can have a new life. And the Bible is saying that if you put your faith in that message, then you experience salvation. But this is not something you earn. Ephesians 2.8 says that this is a gift from God. It's God's gift to you. So you don't get it through earning, but you receive it by faith, understanding that from beginning to end, it's God's work in you. And because of that, because it's God's, you receive the hope of eternal life, the inheritance that Paul talks about in verse 7 that is yours as a Christian. And so it's very important to understand that you aren't a Christian through, through anything you do, through any, any works that you've done to, to earn your salvation, but you are saved because of God's work in you. But there's one more point, and that's that salvation is meant to lead us to a life of good works. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians think that that moment of conversion, the moment they become a Christian, that that's sort of the end of the Christian story, and then they just kind of coast till they get to heaven. But that's not at all what God wants for you. Let's look at Titus one more time. The saying is trustworthy. And I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. This verse is teaching us that God saved us so that we'll receive eternal life, but also so that we'll do good works that honor him and help other people pursue God. And that's the focus of the next lessons, how the gospel, the good news of salvation, how it transforms 
every part of our lives. But before we can talk about that, you must understand that Jesus came to rescue you from your sins, to save you, to give you eternal life. And maybe you're not yet a Christian. Well, now is the moment to put your faith in Jesus, to be forgiven of your sins, and to receive the power of the Holy Spirit.